Good morning, welcome back to the Fine Arts Department. Hope you're doing well today. I wanted to cover some tips in hand building this morning. And if you don't know what hand building means, it just basically means sculpting. And we're gonna be using self-hardening clay for the lesson today. Um, since Thanksgiving is coming up, I uh, just wanted to show you how to sculpt a um, just, just a simple looking turkey. Uh, but I wanted to uh, cover some important things that you'll need to know regarding uh, the hand building process uh, that I will go over as we go along. So I have a ball of clay about this big and I may not be using all of it, but I just tore a big chunk off of the big block that I have thinking that I have enough here. So I'm gonna pull off some. Okay, this is about the size of a golf ball. This will be the uh, biggest part of the turkey sculpture. I'm just squeezing it with each hand, passing it back and forth. This is the wedging process so that we can uh, make it a solid piece of clay, you know, before it was lumpy when I tore it off the block. But this will just make it easier to work with. Air pockets are not a problem for this. Normally when I'm uh, using clay, especially if I'm using firing clay, I will put a big emphasis on getting rid of air pockets because air pockets are a problem in the kiln. But in this case, I will not be firing this particular clay because it's uh, air dry, so. Okay, so roll it up. Okay, this will be the biggest part. All right, so the next piece will be for the head, which will be smaller. Okay, that's about an inch in diameter. All right. Uh, the next piece will be the beak, and this will be a cone. So roll up a smaller piece into a ball like that, and then you're just gonna kind of rock it back and forth between your index finger and your thumb to create a cone or in other words a sharp point that will be the beak so it will look something like that now i'm only going to be working from these three pieces because i want to cover how to uh, do the next step which is slipping and scoring. Very important when it comes to hand building. Um, and then you can add other pieces to it if you would like. The slipping and scoring process does not change uh, depending on how detailed you make your sculpture. But every time you attach pieces, you have to go through that slipping and scoring process. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is attach the head. Oh, and here's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, for the bigger piece, tap it gently on the table surface that you're working from, and that's gonna flatten one end of it. Okay, that's gonna keep um, the base still so that it's not rolling around. Okay. So right now I'm gonna take a sharp tool like that. You'll probably have a toothpick in front of you if you're watching this video and uh, participating in the lesson. And I'm gonna score an area towards the top on that bigger ball like that. Scoring means just scratching into the clay. And you want to do it pretty deep. 
And you're gonna do the same thing on one side of the smaller ball. Like that. So that the score marks are facing each other. Now the reason why we scored this, or the reason why you're, um, you're doing that, is so that these pieces will stick together once you um, blend uh, the two pieces of clay and attach the head. Because the score marks will lock inside of those other score marks that you made. And that will keep the piece from popping off. If you don't score, and if you try to just attach both pieces without doing the scoring process, then um, it may seem like it's secure when the clay is wet, but when it dries, this piece will fall off. Okay, so we've done the scoring. And the next thing is the slipping. And I have a paintbrush that I'm just gonna dip in water. And I'm gonna brush water on those score marks. The reason why it's called slip is because it's watered down clay. You're creating slip by doing this. And that acts as an adhesive in addition to the scoring that will help these pieces stick together. I'm gonna come back over, score one more time. The clay's wet enough for the two pieces to stick. And I'm gonna wiggle the head on like that. Now you'll notice that there are seams and you want to get rid of the seam. You can use a craft, you can use a craft stick for this part or um, of course if you're like myself, you've got all kinds of sculpting tools. And at this point you would just blend the two pieces together like that at the seam. This is part of basic hand building. No matter what you're sculpting, no matter how complicated your sculpture is, you will always go through this process if you want the pieces to stick. Okay, just take your fingers and just smooth that seam out like that. Okay, so we have the base, we have the head. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna put on is the beak, which is gonna go right here. And again, we're gonna slip and score that piece on. So we start here on the head with the score marks. And on the end of the beak, the biggest end, we're going to put score marks there. Take your paintbrush, dip it in water, brush it over the score marks. And then wiggle that in place. And then take your craft stick or whatever that you have to blend the seam. And just blend those together. Now this is the basic form of the turkey. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible so that I can at least show you how to, um, to do the slipping and scoring process as you hand build. Uh, but what, what else you can do to this is you can add feathers. Um, you can buy feathers such as this in the craft section at Walmart or you know, most retail stores. 
and you can just stick those in the back like that. Now, I'm only going to be using just a few feathers, but you'll hopefully by now you know this is pretty self-explanatory. You just stick those in and you can add as many feathers as you like. like that and uh, the clay will need to dry before you start attaching eyes uh, you can just glue googly eyes on them or you know you can you know draw them on or take the end of a paintbrush give it a twist and you can make eyes that way If you want to add wings, you can draw those on. Just a little triangle there. As a sculptor, I'm used to spending hours at a time on a piece. And since I'm limited on time with you all, I'm going to save you from a lot of detail that I can cover. I could cover a lot of tips on how to do detail work, but if you're not used to working in clay, then this is just a basic starting point for you. Okay, all right, so um, the air dry clay will take about 24 hours to dry completely. So after you get through sculpting it, then um, you, know, you can add acrylic paint to it if you would like as an option for additional decoration. But that's left up to you. Okay, this lesson is for a Clover Buds class coming up. Um, but if my 4-H'ers are tuning in, you can get more detailed with something like this and um, put it in the sculpting category in the State Fair. So that's just something to keep in mind. And with that, I'm going to stop for today. I appreciate you tuning in. Mr. Hart is signing off, and I hope that you have a good day.